What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing oh so well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I'll be talking about things like uh, international call-ups, yeah, Champions League draw, who did Chelsea get? Is it a good or bad group? And also I'll be talking about that forgotten man, Chelsea's Belgian striker Michy Batshuayi and how it looks like he's finally on the way out of Chelsea because no one wants him. Before we get into today's video content I'd like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon because I upload every single day and I want you guys to be notified of when I upload content. Oh yeah and do me a favour and please like the video. Alright then let's start with international call ups. Uh, just a couple of ones I want to speak about. Firstly, France. Olivier Giroud has been called up yet again for Didier Deschamps' team, which is great. It's good to see Giroud still doing bits for his side, and he's actually a super integral part of that French team, so it's good to see him get the call up again. I'd like to hope he goes to the Euros. I mean, he's getting on a bit now, but how would we be? 33, 33, 34? It's nice to see Giroud's got a big important part to play regardless, and he could definitely supercharge that France team still. Although N'Golo Kante has not been called up, which further confirms the fact how he does have a serious injury, and he's going to stay at Chelsea, he's going to stay at Cobham and rehabilitate his injury. Now, turns out N'Golo Kante is actually human, and although throughout his career it looks like he's never really had any injury problems, since the end of last season where he played for injury in the Europa League final, and he was immense by the way playing for injury, he's had a couple of little niggly problems and they're not going away. It's good to see Chelsea are being extra careful with him and it looks like they can cope without him at the moment due to Mateo Kovacic playing incredibly well in the similar role, but it's a bit worrying because Kante is still the best interceptive footballer in world football so you want him to be fit and healthy and he's in his prime so hopefully Chelsea are being extra careful they can nurse him back to health and hopefully everything is going to be fine with N'Golo Kante. Right let's talk about Gareth Southgate's boys quickly. It's nice to see Ross the boss Barkley get his call up again. He may no longer be first name on the team sheet for Frank Lampard which is interesting because in pre-season I had him as one of the first names on the team sheet because it looked like he could be so effective under Frank Lampard, but Southgate still fancies him, he called him up. But the reason why Barkley often doesn't get into Frank Lampard's team is because of young Mason Mount, who has got his call up from Gareth Southgate to go to the senior team and play. And it's not surprising really, Mason Mount has been one of the standout performers in the Premier League in the opening weeks, so you can understand why Gareth Southgate would want him. He did call him up before to train with the team, but it's no surprise at all. He's probably was in his thoughts for a long time, and it's great to see him playing for England. Gareth Southgate was asked about Tammy Abraham. Obviously, he's had a good start as well. It took him a couple of games to get going, but he got that lovely brace against Norwich and played generally very, very well and won man of the match. Now, Gareth was asked about this, and although he wasn't called up this time around, Southgate did explain how he's very much in his thoughts and you know what Tammy Abraham is Chelsea's starting number nine now if you're a team like Chelsea and your number nine is a young Englishman he has to be considered for the England team it's like Marcus Rashford at Man United and Abraham kind of is in the mold of how Gareth Southgate wants to play um, I understand why he hasn't been called up this time around because obviously Callum Wilson has been and he's had a couple of England call-ups and you know he's scoring goals still but Tammy should absolutely take Callum Wilson's spot and if he keeps scoring for Chelsea you could see him being England's number two striker behind Harry Kane. If Tammy Abraham scores more goals than Marcus Rashford this season, Rashford's got a lot to answer for because Marcus Rashford is on like 300k a week. Tammy Abraham, I don't know what he's on but he's still on probably what he was being paid at Aston Villa. He's not signed a new contract, so he could be on like 30 grand a week or something. I don't know, I'm just speculating, but I imagine it will be very low. Anyway, get down in the comments, let me know if you think Tammy Abraham can outscore Marcus Rashford in the Premier League this season. I mean, if he does, Rashford's got to look at himself. All right, some quick words on Chelsea's Champions League group. Chelsea have drawn a really interesting bunch of teams. They've got Lille, they've got Valencia, and they've got Ajax. Now, this isn't the easiest group in the world, but it's also 
a very manageable group, not too difficult. If Chelsea had too easy a group, I would worry for them. I feel like it's important to get an early test so when you leave the group, you don't get shell shocked through with against decent opposition and basically implode. Lille should be relatively easy. Obviously, they've sold Nicola Pepe as well. Valencia are an interesting one because they are no mugs, and that will be a quite a difficult game, especially going away in Spain. We'll see how Chelsea deal with that. And obviously, the standout name there is Ajax. Champions League semi finalist last season, and they only just went out dramatically. They should have got to the final. And obviously, champions of the Eredivisie. I worry that people and Chelsea might get complacent in regards to playing Ajax because you could be like well come on they've sold two of their best players in Matthias De Ligt and Frankie De Jong but the fact is what made Ajax so great last season was this sort of sense of togetherness and belief it wasn't really like one player that stood out they were all incredibly good and they've still got loads of those incredibly good players so when Chelsea go away to the uh, Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam they should be absolutely on their top top game because Ajax are still going to be an incredibly difficult opposition. So for me, a very winnable group, but the three teams in there, they could absolutely all have the odd result here and there. Certainly Valencia and Ajax will be looking to chip points away and Chelsea need to be careful because if there's a sort of evenly distributed points over that group, there could be a danger that Chelsea drop out so they can't get complacent. They need to be on top of their game and they can win that group. Right, so interesting. That's the international stuff out of the way. So let's move on to the main event. The forgotten man, the unwanted man, the excellent finisher. He's not a troublemaker. He's not a toxic influence in the dressing room. He's fit. He's in good shape. Why does no one want Michy Batshuayi? This is something I've spoken about many times on this channel. I've done videos on Michy Batshuayi. I've talked about his goal score record how it's actually really really good I've done videos on just Chelsea strikers generally that's why is an amazing finisher there's still a very strong argument that Batshuayi is the best finisher at Chelsea Football Club. You stick him in the box, the 18-yard area, you feed balls into him, odds are he's going to score you goals. But that apparently isn't enough for Chelsea coaches. And it's three different coaches, very, very different coaches now. Antonio Conte, defensive disciplinarian, very rigid tactically. Um, does a lot of shadow play, but you know, he's a winner. He's a character. Very, very strong-minded coach. Maurizio Sarri, very rigid tactically as well, but more laissez-faire possession, passing patterns, very heavy on the passing type of coaching. He didn't fancy Michy Batshuayi either. And now on the complete other side of the spectrum, you've got Frank Lampard, the young English coach who wants to play more direct, still an expressive type of coach, wants his young players to go out and you know express themselves, score goals, be direct, but he as well does not fancy Michy Batshuayi. What the hell is going on? Well, we can all safely assume now that something's going on. And I, I said before, and it's not just me, it's journalists, it's people around the club, they've said there's a problem with Batshuayi in terms of retaining tactical information. You'd imagine that wouldn't matter as much for someone like Frank Lampard in comparison to his Italian predecessors, but apparently it is a problem. Amongst all that, Michy Batshuayi is a third choice choice striker now. There's no escaping that. You can tell Frank Lampard and Jody Morris they want Tammy Abraham to be the number nine. He's got the number nine on his shirt but they want him to be the main man. He suits the way they play. He's aggressive in terms of his pressing. He runs the channels. Does all that stuff that Batshuayi should be able to do but he can't apparently and stuff that you can't expect Giroud to do because of the type of striker he is. So we know Tammy Abraham's number one and we know Giroud's an important player and he's absolutely number two and in fact in certain situations, Giroud might be picked over Tammy Abraham. I see Giroud being incredibly important in competitions like the Champions League, and he might actually be selected over Tammy Abraham in high-profile games, like he was picked in the Super Cup. He worked incredibly well against Liverpool, and that is a high-profile opposition. So, I get it. Third-choice Michy, and Frank Lampard was making the noises in press conferences like, Michy's a very important player for us. We need that competition. We need that competition for Tammy and Olivier. He could absolutely force his way into the team. But but coaches say things apparently and it looks like Michy Batshuayi could be on his way out. Now the rumours are a loan deal to two clubs mainly that's creating the most sort of stir of information. That's Roma and Napoli. It's quite interesting really because if he does go on a loan to Italy he's done all five major European leagues. So he'd be at Marseille, Chelsea, Dortmund, Valencia and then he can go to Syria. Roma won him as a potential Jekka replacement and I guess he'd do pretty well there. But Ancelotti apparently also wants him at Napoli and that would be a good move for him. Apparently it's a one year loan deal and 
I, I've read different things, option to buy, no option to buy, but if there is an option to buy, it would be 30 million or 31 million, which considering the length of his contract would kind of make sense. It is a shame though, let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about Michy Batshuayi? Do you understand how he's third choice in terms of what Giroud offers the team and how you can kind of see Lampard and Morris want Tammy to be the main man? I don't think Michy Batshuayi is a third choice striker. I think he could absolutely do a job as a first team striker for a decent European club. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right guys, that's it for today's Chelsea news video. I hope you've enjoyed the content and if you have, please do like this video because that helps me out a lot. Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on everything that I've spoken about. I'm really interested to hear what you think about the Champions League draw, the international call-ups. What's going on with Michy Batshuayi? Do you understand I'm leaving? All that luck. You can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That is at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Just to let you guys know, tomorrow I probably won't be doing a video because I'm going to Stamford Bridge and I might not just have time. Anyway, I'm out guys, enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby